Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is Sunday, August 26, 2018, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. Our pastor is the Reverend John H. Pollock. Our organist is Greg Nolte. Good morning, and welcome to our worship service this morning. We have a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield, Clark County area, or looking for a new church home, we invite you to take St. John, your new church home. We begin, as always, preparing our hearts and minds for worship with the order of confession and forgiveness. So I ask that you please turn to page 94 in the front of the red worship book. You find it in the front in your pew in the book rack. And by those who can do so without difficulty, the please stay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, come the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in fault worthy of you by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not lived with the whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may go right in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts and faith. Amen. Amen. We now begin our worship with beautiful Savior, hymn number 838, in the back of your worship. In number 838.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Sunday, September 9th. Both services will be here in the sanctuary, and it will be rally day for Sunday school to kick off our Sunday school year. So uh, please uh, join us on the 9th for rally day, and I think everybody here comes to the service. It used to be we'd have some people from 8 o'clock who would come and take 30 during the summer because they didn't like it. We need Gina's time to need flowers for being Sunday for the sanctuary. So if you have you would like to get flowers next Sunday, uh, please call the church office or call Gina before Tuesday. And the last thing, um, I have an opportunity to give you a teaching moment. Our next hymn is on the back of your bulletin. It is the church in the Bible. Now, oftentimes I'll ask why certain hymns aren't in our hymnal, or why we don't sing them. And this song is a perfect example. If you look at the lyrics of this song, you will notice there's not one word about praising God or the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not one word about the Holy Spirit. It's all about the church. That someone remembers from long ago. Lutheran hymnody. Uh, the standard of Lutheran churches, any hymn sung in worship must praise God and proclaim the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That it can't be something that's just warm and fuzzy and reminds us of our childhood. Now, Sunday school, and where the Lutheran churches I grew up in, Sunday school had its own hymnal that had a lot of those hymns like Church in the Wildwood, In the Garden, those type of hymns that are popular in America, and they were sung during Sunday school. But for worship, according to Lutheran Church, a hymn must be proclaiming the gospel through its lyrics. Uh, some form of the gospel. Like Amazing grace that proclaims the idea we're saved by grace. How great thou art. Proclaims how great God is and that Jesus will come in glory. Uh, the church is one foundation. It's the foundation of Jesus Christ. So this is why you oftentimes do not see a song maybe you requested or whatever uh, being sung because I beat them and that is why I beat them. This song got in because I was back from vacation, had a lot of catching up to do. Charlene was leaving early Friday, so we had to pull the gun. I was worried about getting a sermon night before, so I didn't even know we were singing this song. But uh, normally this is a type of hymn that is not put in the hymnals because there's nothing like God, Jesus Christ, and so, with that said, we will now sing the church in the world.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> when or where do you turn to in time of trouble? Do you turn to God? Or do you turn to philosophy? Or to science? Or to sociology? Or to technology? Or do you turn to Eastern mysticism or some other world religion? For example, time of trouble do you turn to movement? The question is why? Which one? Buddha was a man, a human being just like you and me. He made no promises to us about salvation, he made no promises about an afterlife. In fact, it is said that when his favorite disciple and most loyal disciple was dying, he cried out to Buddha to give him away to death and whatever was to come. And Buddha said, I'm sorry that I can't. You have to make your own path. I'm sure that was very comforting to his disciple. The wife of Muhammad. Muhammad was a man just like us. He had a somewhat checkered past. He makes no promise about payment for sin, forgiveness of sin. He makes no promise or guarantee that you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. He says that if you do so many things and submit to all these rules of revelation in the Quran, and then Allah will be merciful. But he makes no assurances. He makes no promise.
picked up. Once the desert storm was over, the slide began. Now that the game is standing in Iraq, aren't in the news every day, the tenants are sleeping. There are those who come to Jesus, but then they turn away from Jesus. And we see that demonstrated in our gospel lesson today. There are those way back then who saw Jesus face to face, who heard his miracles, who saw his miracles, heard his teachings. They came to him. The ones are needs from that. They slipped back. Again, we read the sixth chapter of John. It began with the feeding of the 5,000, with the crowd trying to make Jesus king. He withdrew up into the mountains, sent the disciples all in a boat to Capernaum. During the middle of the night, Jesus walks on water, joins the boat in Capernaum. The next morning, the crowd wakes up, sees Jesus in there. The disciples are getting boats and following to Capernaum, and Jesus continues to speak to them about being a real life. As we pick up the gospel today, Jesus is in the synagogue in Capernaum, continuing this discourse on being the bread of life. The Father take man in the wilderness and die. Those who eat of the true bread of life will be forever. And so after Jesus is finished teaching, we read in verse 60, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? This is a hard saying. That Greek word literally means dried out like a twig. It means to be brittle. So that's the imagery of this word. Like a dried out twig is brittle. Of course, such a twig is of little use except to throw it to the fire and it'll make a fire. But the word also has some other meanings which are more appropriate to the attitude of the crowd. And that is it means to be objectionable. Impossible to accept or believe. Offensive. Unfortunately today, there are those who find the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be offensive. They find it impossible to accept or believe. They find it objection. Why? When Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye who are late and heavy laden, I will give you rest. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. When Jesus tells us that God loves us so much, he sent his son not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. How is that offensive? When Jesus tells us to love God above all else and to love our neighbor as ourself and then says to us who are a family of faith that we love one another as he loved us, how is that offensive? Yet you have college campuses today that are trying out all Christian groups accusing them of hate speech. How is love thy neighbor hate speech? How is doing to others as you would have them do unto you? Hate speech. How is for God so love the world? Hate speech. But there are those today who make that claim. Why? Part of its ego. We have been filled with so much through the educational process, we are beginning to think we're invincible. Because there have been so many advances in medicine enabling us to live longer than we ever have. People who think they're invincible. They begin to think they don't need God. They don't need a Savior. They can do it themselves. So when they hear Jesus die for the sins of the world, that means they got to knock their ego down a few notches and realize that they need something more than themselves. And they don't need so we see people today having an interest in Jesus, but then once they hear him, they say, all oh, these teachings are offensive. They're impossible to accept and believe. Yes, if you look at it through human reason, 
which is stained by sin. But if you look at it with spiritual glasses, you realize Jesus is who we need to turn to in times of trouble, trial, and tribulation. It is Jesus we need to turn to in the changes, chances, and challenges of life. It is Jesus we need to turn to in the disappointments and defeats. And it is Jesus we need to turn to in the victories and celebrations. And then John tells us, after this, many of his disciples turn back and no longer walk with him. Now this is talking about this crowd of 5,000 whom he had fed and who wanted to make him king. You know, as long as Jesus was passing out freebies, they were all for him. But now suddenly he's challenged. He's told them that he is greater than Moses. And that that bread Moses gave was just a sustained their forefathers so they could make it to the promised land or venture toward it. Yet it is the bread of life that brings you to life. And so they come away. And then after this, that means as a result of, as a result of what? As a result of Jesus' teaching. As a result of his disciples turned away. That means to stop following someone or to end association with them. So now, these followers are ending their association with Jesus. Because he's not talking about freedoms anymore. He's not about like, talking about giving them food whenever they want. He's not talking about being king or running out the Romans. He's not talking about glory and power. They no longer walk with him. That means to return to your old ways uh, to conduct yourself as you did. There are people who come to the Christian faith and then because something doesn't go as they expected or because they've heard this phony materialist gospel that all oh, pray to Jesus and you'll get whatever you want, they become disappointed. So they go back to their old ways. Well, Jesus didn't do really what I wanted, so I'll go find somebody else. But Jesus never talked about material things, except the negative. You don't say that. Believe in him, you'll get that Cadillac. Because now they say Cadillac came as the president of these guys. They say Mercedes Benz or BMW or something nowadays. Those will seem to be the super luxury cars. Um, so uh, they were following for the wrong reason. So they come away and you still see people Jesus, doing this to Jesus. And so then Jesus looks to the twelve and he says, if you want to go away as well, here the word, the phrase, want to go away means to withdraw from someone and to cease activity with them because it's too difficult. Jesus never said Jesus never promised us a rose garden as old Cain and Ronnie and used to sing about it. He goes to Cain and Ronnie. I heard of somebody else. My name was an uncle. Uh, he never promised it. He said we have to take up this, our cross and follow him. He said we have to deny ourselves. He told us there would be conflicts between parents and children, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, because of him. There would be those who would come to believe, and there would be those who wouldn't. And so it would cause conflict between each other. But the rewards for following him, the gifts, I should say, not the rewards for following him, are greater than anything that we can have. Promise of everlasting life. So, do you want to cease activity when it goes? It's too difficult. And then St. Peter, as he often does, speaks to the Lord. And he proclaims words that we should claim as our words. They should be part of our daily creed, our 
daily confession of faith. And he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? That means who should we follow? Are we going to follow technology? Are we going to follow science? Are we going to follow social activism? Are we going to follow sociology? Are we going to follow power, prestige? Jesus 
Christ crucified. There is no other. He kept going on about it. Oh, we got to do our own atonement. We got to make way. What have you been listening to the past two years? Because for both of you, you had the pleasure of going back to Solomon. Nobody could present the gospel in a more stunned, attention grabbing way than Dr. Solomon. I can remember sitting, listening to him preach, and he would preach for 45 minutes, and he thought, why is he stopping him? And he thought he preached only for 10. And he just had such a way with words and understanding biblical theology and the whole doctrine of sac uh, salvation by grace and faith. And so, as his representative, Representative Dr. Johnson, who also did a very good job of preaching the true gospel of Jesus, I was a representative. I couldn't sit there and let that go by. So I had to evaluate it harshly. Because otherwise I'd be letting somebody go into the third year seminary with the idea that we do our own at home. Finally, by the time he graduated, he got it, thankfully. And had, uh, as a pastor for a number of years, I saw him in the third or fourth year I was here, I saw him pay the and called the glory and preaching down in North Carolina. Jesus Christ crucified. It's more than just preaching Jesus. If you just say, well, we preach Jesus, somebody would say, well, okay, you're preaching Jesus, the miracle worker, you're preaching Jesus, the philosopher, you're preaching Jesus, the great Ephesus, you're preaching Jesus, the prophet. No, we're preaching Jesus Christ crucified. And if you don't do this in your own life, I encourage you to do so. The next time you face the difficulty, especially the next time you face pain, instead of focusing on your pain, focus on Jesus Christ hanging on that cross. I do this, and it is helping me as you know. I had severe spinal stenosis. So every four, three or four months, I had to go to Inglewood, and my doctor's physician assistant injects me on both sides of my spine with whatever it is to take away the pain. And it works for three months or so. There's some pain to that. But I don't focus on what she's doing. I close my eyes and see Jesus hanging on that cross and suffering so much for someone as lousy as me. In fact, that he suffered for all of us and died for all of us that we might be forgiven and have eternal life. And I don't even feel the pain. This past Wednesday, I had to undergo a very unpleasant procedure. I didn't even know I was going to have to undergo it until I got there. I thought, doctor was just going to tell me about the results of the CAT scan I had then. This little nurse comes in and says, you're going to have this procedure done. And I'm sure she could tell I was nervous and everything because I started talking about a minute. And that's why I do it. It really kind of scared her out of her head. But I did the same thing. I focused Jesus on the cross. And that's why I was her crucifix around my neck. Because I never want to forget what Jesus did for me and for us. And as I focus on that, I did not feel a bit of pain. In fact, when, when we were done, the little girl said to me, she said, you must really have a high pain balance because most of them are scoring all over the table when they have to go to see you. I said, they're fascinated by what I was seeing on the screen. I wasn't focusing on Jesus. That's why it's important that it's Jesus Christ crucified. Not just Jesus, a figure in history. Not just Jesus, another prophet. Jesus Christ crucified. And but because he died, because he suffered so much for us, he is the one who returned in those trials, tragedies, and tribulations, in those changes, chances, and challenges of life, in those defeats and disappointments.
Now, that doesn't mean we'll understand them this side of heaven. But at least we'll be given that strength to know this is not the end of the story. But no matter what happens, we have a place waiting for us prepared by Jesus Christ himself in that glorious kingdom of heaven for all eternity. So when you're there, when facing something tragic or painful or disappointing, or when you're celebrating or having a triumph, remember, it is Jesus Christ who returned. Always. Amen. Peace of God which has his own understanding. Keep your hearts and minds. Now seen great is our faithfulness in number 733 and the back of our red hands.
Please turn to page 105 in the front of your worship book to the words of the Apostles' Creed. Again, I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand as with the whole church we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Growing in the soil of the Spirit, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all who seek the richness of life in God. Our response today is to hear our prayer. Generous God, you feed us with bread that will nourish us to eternal life. Keep us always faithful to the Spirit and life we receive from the bread of life. Gracious God, Hear our prayer. Give to the nations of the world your light and your peace. Grant our leaders wisdom and courage that they may lead with compassion for all people. Gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heal those among us who are struggling with sickness of any kind, especially Brandon, Jude, Sal, Dr. Sal, Mary, Rob, Hannah, Emma Lou, Mike, Tom, Jeremy, Terry Kay, and Matthew. And being touched by you, the sickness may be turned into health. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Bless those entrusted with the ministry of prayer in this congregation. Keep them alert to the needs of this community, and they may support all we do with their intercessions. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died, especially our sister Jeanette Burke, and ask that you would keep us in communion with them all, and with all your saints who surround us in the great who surround us in the great cloud of witnesses. Gracious God, hear our hear prayer. Hear us as we pray, living God, and in your mercy give us all good things. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, 
Jesus. 
Thanks be to God. That concludes our 1030 service. Join us next week in person at the drive-in service at the Melody Cruise Inn. It's our pet blessing, and it'll be the last service at the drive-in for this season. And then the 8 o'clock service will be back at the church along with the 1030. St. John's has a food pantry open Wednesday, 9 to 1045. Outreach store open 930 to 1, Monday through Friday, closed on Thursday. Rainbow Table is every Friday from noon to 1. Everyone is welcome. Again, St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio, and our telephone number is 937-323-7508.